Church has always been a vital part of every believer's life. Hello, I'm Pastor Gray, pastor of Emmanuel Baptist Church here in Longview, Texas. Thank you for taking the time to tune in for this service. I'm standing in our auditorium, and here in just a moment, I'm going to take you into this auditorium as we are conducting the services here at 2200 West Loop 281. My heart's desire is that as the Word of God is preached, that God would do something during this service. Again, thank you for being with us. Enjoy the services. I'll be back at the end. God bless you. Go to Matthew chapter 5, if you will. And again, I'm not quite sure how long we'll keep this format, uh, but uh, I have enjoyed it. There's been a couple of times after the offering time, I've been like, I need to get up and preach again. And uh, in Matthew chapter 5, and uh, we're, we're going to start here, and then we're going back to the book of Daniel on this night. So Matthew chapter 5, and I want you to notice verse number 13, Matthew chapter 5, and you got away without being introduced this morning. We'll catch you tonight. So I'm looking down there going, I was waiting for your friends to lift their hand. No, you ain't got no friends. And uh, so Matthew chapter 5, look at verse 13. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted, is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. I want you to notice verse number 16 and look at the wording here. Let your light so shine before men. Very interesting that they may see your good work, and what, what is that last phrase right there, and what? Glorify your Father which is in heaven. Go back to Daniel, if you will, and travel back there, and look at Daniel chapter 1, <clears throat> and verse number 17, Daniel chapter 1, and verse 17, as for these four children, God gave them knowledge, Daniel 1, 17, go to Isaiah, and keep heading if you're looking down, at head toward New York, and you'll find it, all right? As, I'm going to keep waiting until the pages stop, and uh, Daniel 117, yeah, y'all stop that, you're doing it on purpose now. Daniel 117, as for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill and all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Now the end of the days that the king had said he should bring them in, talking about Daniel and the four, these, the three Hebrew children, and that he, should, that he should bring them in, then the prince of the eunuch brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. And the king communed with them, and among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them Ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all the realm. And David continued until the first year, um, uh, until the first year of King Cyrus. We know that now they're ten times better. Travel back to verse number 15 because this is where we're going to pick up the title for today. In verse number 15. At the end of the ten, of ten days, their countenances appeared. What are the next, two, next three words? Fairer. And what? Fatter. That's the title for tonight, Fairer and Fatter. And let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you that your Bible is so, your word that you've given us is so intertwined with your fingerprints that, God, I am amazed how that it is very um, appropriate for 2024. In fact, it's probably, this book is so alive that we are right on time with the sermon for tonight. God, I ask that you would give us clarity of thought, that the things that are going to be stated, Lord, that I would not restate for the sake of proving a point, but I would state for the sake of clarity, and Lord, please, use it in our lives. Bless us now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We know the story of Daniel. Daniel chapter 1, you find a quartet of men who have been carried away into captivity. 
They have been left their homeland, and now they have been taken to a land to where these are now the newcomers, the new captives that have been brought in. The Babylonian names that were given them were, Belt, were, were the, 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 uh, the, the names that were given them, Babylonians, were Belteshazzar, that was Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That's how we commonly know them. However, their, their Jewish names were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. These four men were placed in the care of Melzar. Mel, Melzar's job was to prepare these men to be presented before the king. Part of this plan was to fatten them up. Part of this plan was to get them in a personal place to where now they could be presented to the king. But something amazing happens in Daniel chapter 1 and verse number 8. Daniel comes along and he says to this request that he purposed in his heart not to defile himself. Can, can I just stop and say this? The hardest thing you and I will ever do is walk among this world and not come out on the other side defiled. How, how many of us old people and old as you're, you're past the stage of teenagers and single? You're, you're in, how many are glad we're not starting over in this day and time? Mm. How, how many would say amen on this one? If you got yourself in that kind of mess the first time around, what would it be the second time around? Here you have these four men on a 10-day eating plan of pulse and water instead of eating the king's meat and wine. Mel, Mel, Melzar consented to the plan that Daniel came back and said, look, we're not going to eat the king's meat. We're not going to drink the king's wine if you will let us have our own diet. Can I just stop? What kind of diet should a Christian have? It should not be found on the menu of the world. We are in a huge debate these days about, well, what is acceptable, what is not. Let me tell you something. If the world's rolling out it on its menu, let me tell you something. The children of God have no business eating from that menu. And Daniel stepped in in captivity and said, look, I promise you, if you will let us have our own diet, and if you will let us have our way of doing it, and don't make us participate with the king's meat and the king's wine, that I promise you we won't embarrass you. And I will tell you this, and we're coming down to, to, the, to, to, the, to, to the lesson for tonight, but any believer who lives according to God's diet should not be shocked if they stand out in this world. Can I say that again? When you live according to the Word of God, don't be shocked if all of a sudden you stand out in this world. It is interesting and motivating. Not only did their countenance stand out, but they stood out from among their peers. Not only did they stand out in the world, but they stood out from among their peers. It is very easy to become a chameleon in this church and become the, the color of everybody around us, to become the Christianity of everybody around us. But we were not meant to be that way. We were meant to eat God's word and drink God's word and become God's children to the point that we stand out even among the people that are around us. Not because we're better, but because when you do it God's way, you will stand out among the world and among God's people. Look at Daniel 1.10 because it's found right there. And the prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I fear my lord the king who hath appointed your meat and your drink. For why should he see your faces worse liking, uh, liking than the children which are of your sort? You know what he's saying? I'm getting ready to take everybody in captivity and I'm going to bring all y'all in, and everybody's going to look the same, and you four guys are going to stick out, and it's going to cost me my head. There should be a difference in our countenance. Look at verse number 15. And at the end of the 10 days, there what, please? Countenance. There is this disposition. And when a child of God is put up next to a child of the devil... When a child of God is standing next to the world, there ought to be a difference. They don't even need to interact with us. There ought to be this difference that is going on. Because when you and I understand where this contextually is totally about the physical, 
you, you see everything that's going on here in Daniel chapter 1 is about the physical. They did not want them looking like they were children of captivity or that they had been mistreated. The king gave them meat. The king gave them wine because he needed to fatten them up to make sure that they looked good, that they were being treated good. And Daniel said, I don't want to look like everybody else. And I promise you, we won't embarrass you if you'll let us eat a different diet. And where this is talking about, the diet would help their flesh. Spiritually, we get it, don't we? That spiritually, our countenance, the spirit part of you, the countenance part of you, is you need to consider this, that if you and I continue to eat the diet of the world, that we will have the same disposition of the world. But why? When I was reading this and studying this, I was like, all right, they've been brought out of captivity. I mentioned this morning that I'm reading the Bible in three parts now, and this happened to be one of my second readings here in Daniel, and then as I was studying the Gospels in my third reading, that's why we went to the Gospels, to the book of Matthew, because now it was like, God, I understand this, I preach from this text before, I've heard a lot of preachers preach from this text, purpose in your heart, I get that, God, but what is going on in the text? And then I found this to be true. Anytime that you and I fit in with the world, we have no influence. You see, everything that God's wanting to do in your heart and in my heart is to put us in a position of influence. But you can't get there in this life by being a child of God and acting like a child of the devil. It's not going to work. The only thing that's going to make you stand out, God has strategically placed you everywhere you're supposed to be. Your job, your neighborhood, even those of you that are retired, God's put you right where you need to be. I found this interesting. If you look at Dan, if you'll go go to uh, uh, Daniel chapter one, in Daniel chapter one, in verse number eight. If you, I'm sorry, go back to Genesis chapter four, and and, and I was I was going to cut this part out, but I, I need to I need to land right here for just a moment. Whenever you and I are not doing it God's way. Whenever there is something going on, the countenance is the billboard of what's going on in the heart. Look at Genesis chapter 4 and verse number 5. But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect, and Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. Verse number 6. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is thy what, please? Countenance what? Fallen. Ladies and gentlemen, when problems start happening on the inside, then it will impact your countenance on the outside. Y'all, don't give the singers too hard of a time when they get up here and when our, when our kids sing and they look scared half to death. You want to know why they're scared half to death? Because they think some of you are mad at them. Because we don't understand our countenance. And when all of a sudden we don't have the right countenance, it's because we're not eating the right diet. When you and I come to this point like they did, go to Daniel chapter 1 verse 8. So now it's like, why? What is the purpose of the diet? What is the purpose of what God you're trying to do? This immense peer pressure. Go back to Daniel chapter 1 verse number 8. To adopt the culture around them. These four boys knew that if we're going to adopt the culture, then we cannot stand out in the environment. But once we are true believers and they start adopting the diet of God's word, then get ready, you're going to stand out. Look at Daniel 1.8. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile. Look at verse 9. Now God had brought Daniel into, what is the next word please? Favor favor why do we need to stand out so that we can cross a line and have what favor y'all can tell believers that work out in the world there's many of our our our, our, our members of Emmanuel that are young people teenagers and college students they're single but I found it very incredible 
that they'll tell me stories, pastor, I got a raise. Pastor, they moved me up. Pastor, they're going to make me this. Pastor, there's advancement. And all of a sudden, how does this happen? You know how this happens? Because the heathen world knows we don't want somebody that, we want somebody different. And there's this difference that exists in the children of God who are, who are trying to live their life honorably for the Lord. And guess what it does? It brings you into favor. God did not leave you here to fit in. God left you here to stand out. And if you are the golden child of your job, if you are the darling of where you work at, you didn't get there because of your own devices. You got there because God gave you what? Favor. How many times have you walked into a restaurant and you were favored? How many times have you been in a business and you were favored? How many times did you walk in and all of a sudden you had a relationship with the powers that be that you necessarily, that other people don't have? Everywhere you and I go, we were called to stand out, but you cannot stand out before this world if you do not have their favor, and that favor only comes when you start having a steady diet of God's word. Show me what the world thinks about you and I, and there is something about you catch the eye. But look at verse number 18. They not only found favor with the manager, the eunuch, but in verse number 18, now the end of the days that the king had said he should bring them in, then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. And the king communed with them, and among them, was, was, among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, and Mishael, Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all the realm. And Daniel continued even unto the first year of King Cyrus. Not only did they have favor with the manager, but they found favor with the king. Why? Why have favor? What is the purpose of favor? And this is where you and I must understand the purpose of favor is not to get more hours. The purpose of favor is not to get more money. The purpose of favor is not for your own gain. The purpose of having favor is so you are put in a position with people who love you, people who adore you, to put you in this little bitty realm and look at it, if you will, in Daniel 1.19. And the king did what? Communed with them. God has opened doors for some of you that you have access to places that other people cannot go. How does this happen? It is a testament to the fact that you must love the Lord and you've got a steady diet of God. And I have, I have one longing, even for myself, from this passage of Scripture, and that is this. Bob, don't waste the favor. God made you stand out in your environment. God made you stand out among the people you deal with, not just to have favor, but so they can see my faith. You see, I am, need to be fairer and fatter in my spirit so that I stand out among all the others so that I can have favor and then when I have favor, then they see my faith. That's what this is all about. It is not about being different from the world and our standards and our sanctification just to be weird. It is not just to be out here to where everybody looks at us. No, no, no. It is to have such the Spirit of God on the inside that it gives you favor. And then when it gives you favor, then... You can take your faith and impact their world. Brother, Brother John and Miss Kim, was it a year ago that your guest came with you? Two years ago? A year ago, right? Miss Kim is a sams holic she, uh, she owns part of Sam's. In fact, if you go in, there's a statue of her standing there with an apron on and a spatula in her hand. And, uh, and, and she goes and she would always come back and her and Brother John, and she would say, look, look what they did for me. 
And she had gained favor with a couple of people that were gatekeepers for a couple of things there at Sam's. God didn't give Kim and John Smith favor. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Am I making sense? He didn't give you favor just to get free. He gave you favor so that the moment you could do it, you could take your faith and they would believe in your God. I want you to travel with me, if you will. And I find this very interesting. Travel to, are you there in Daniel? I want you to see this in living proof here. Daniel chapter 3. Remember, God gave the three Hebrew boys favor. And in this passage of Scripture, just let me stop and comment on this. Some people ask, where is Daniel through all this time? But you have to understand there were 120 provinces. Daniel had now been escalated, and he had now been put up at the very top. And although it doesn't say where he's at, it does give credence to the fact he was off in another, another province when this was going on. But look what it said here. And he commanded the, the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Daniel 3.20. And, and Abednego, and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats and their hosen and their hats and the other garments that, which, uh, and, and were cast in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king commanded, commandment was urgent, the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fi- fly, fire, slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar, king, was what? Astonied and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the what? Son of God. Why are we to eat a different diet? And what is the purpose of us doing it God's way in his word is not so we can stand out and have a badge at the end of our journey to say we really were separated. No, no, no. We are to eat a different diet so that our, our spirit, man, becomes fairer and fatter in our countenance. If anybody ought to be smiling, it ought to be us. If anybody ought to be happy, it ought to be us. If anybody ought to be joyful, it ought to be us. There was a period of time where Jason Combest and Brother James, they, they worked here and hung out here. And one thing I appreciate, brother, 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 brother Joe, did I say James? I meant Joe. James has been on my mind. And uh, so anyway, uh, Joe and Jason is the fact you could hear them coming before you saw them. How many know what I'm talking about? You could hear, want to know why? They're always singing to the top of their lungs. Because here's why. They're eating a different diet. And you and I cannot eat the diet of the word and the water and interact with Jesus. He said this, that, your joy might be what? Full. And it ought to be overflowing to where when we get out of here, all of a sudden, you're, there is no stopping us as chi- children of God. Here's why. Because when we do it God's way, you will get favor because it just comes out. I, Brother Miss Downs, I was reminiscing this past tournament that the kids went to, and, and, uh, and I had to leave early from the tournament, but that last night they were in that restaurant, and they just started singing. They, they, they broke into some songs. And I was looking at it on my phone this past, this past couple of days and thinking about tonight's sermon. And I did find it amazing. Can I ask Brother Miss Downs, and just by the way, thank you for loving our kids. And what, Brother Downs, what was the reaction of the staff? Went to tears. You want to know why? Because I promise you the average school and the average ball team, they may have Christian on the side of their vehicle, but I promise you the average, they come in and they are so eating the diet of the world that they don't stand out in their environment. It doesn't mean that the kids of, the teenagers of EBC or LCA or whatever are any better than anybody else. It just means this. Once you start eating of this kind of diet, it's going to come out in your 
countenance. That countenance is what rings the bell. And then all of a sudden there is favor. Favor for what? Favor so that they can see your faith. It's not favor to get free. It's favor so that they can see your faith. And these three Hebrew boys gained favor. And I'm getting ready to lay it at your feet. They gained favor. And then when they were in the middle of a situation, the king that they communed with and the king that gave them favor was the king that saw their faith. You see, God has strategically put you around someone. Can I ask you a question here? I'm going to lay it at your feet. Have you taken advantage of that relationship to talk about your faith? You say, but pastor, you don't understand. That's a little bit awkward. Why? If that's who you are, then they know that's who you are. And God didn't give you favor to just sit there. God gave you favor so you could take your faith and step out. Brother Poncho's supervisor right now is in the hospital. And, and, and I was able to go up this afternoon and, and pray with him. And I would ask that you all pray for him. He's, he uh, is going to be up there for a little bit in, in uh, just um, rehab. And while we were up there, and I'll talk about the second part after the, at, at the end of the service. But while I was up there, I was praying with him. And here is Brother Poncho. He knows him as Francisco. And, uh, but I'll tell you what he said, Brother Poncho, that I've been waiting till now, not even realizing the two would go together. But I said, you know that that man loves you. And he said this, that man stands out where we work at. Why? Because anybody that knows Brother Poncho, and Brother Poncho, don't let your head get too big, but anybody that knows Brother Poncho knows that he's got a different diet in this world than what the world's eating. And Brother Poncho can give you testimony right now that when Made Right made that change, and Brother Poncho came and said, Pastor, I don't even know what to do. He had worked there for years, and then Made Right made a decision to change, and there was a sister company that was going to start selling alcohol. And Brother Poncho had to step up and make a decision. But as soon as he did, he not only had favor with the bosses here back here at Made Right, but guess what else? The new system, he now gets favor there. He does not have favor for his supervisor to end up in the hospital and for him just to have favor. You know what that favor was for? So that when he walked through that door, when he I was about ready to ask him about his faith, it was not foreign to how he'd been living. And I think God has put you where you are at, not for you to fit in with the culture and not for you to go along to get along, but for you to have such a different diet that you're fairer and you're fatter in your spirit so that you can show them your faith. Are you still there in Daniel? Go to Daniel chapter 6. Look what happened with, with, with Daniel. The three Hebrew boys, they had favor. Why? So that they could show their faith. Daniel chapter 6 and verse number 1, it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom and 120 princes which should be over the whole kingdom. And over, these three, uh, oh, and, and over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give account unto, unto them, and the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel was what, please? Preferred above the presidents and the princes because, and what is it? Excellent spirit was in him. I cannot stress this enough. It could be the, the reason that we are not a bigger impact on the world around us at our job is because we're not eating the diet of the book. And because we don't eat this diet, there's nothing different about us in our spirit, in our disposition. But you and I have the best soul winning plan ever. And it's not a day. It's a life. And when that life is in tune with the diet, then all of a sudden, you are going to have an excellence in your spirit that's going to give you favor. I have known a lot of graduating classes that split up as friends afterwards. But Robert's here tonight, 
and Robert Bagwell's here tonight, and Juan is in Mexico on this weekend, and then Jarrett Wenger, and then Brother Roche. These guys are the four amigos. They are. They are. And I've never seen four guys stay together as friends. But each of these men in their own right, their own right, have gotten favor. Favor. When your mama was on her way to to be with the Lord and I don't know if y'all, I know you remember it, but we were standing there where you work, the chaplain showed up. And that chaplain showed up. And when I heard this chaplain talk about Robert Jr., he said, oh, one of the best employees we have. How do you get to that point at such a young age? Let me tell you how you get there. You get favor. It's because you're eating a different diet than the world does. And then it brings out a different disposition and a different spirit. I'm amazed at Brother Miave, just amazed at, at how much he loves the Lord. And, and Robert and, and Brother Roche, y'all going to have to bring your heads down after you leave here. Amen. And, uh, but I am amazed. I am truly amazed because he will tell me things and I'll be like, okay, how? Let me tell you why. Because they're eating a different diet. Jarrett calls me the other day, and, and, and when Miss Kelly and I were together, and, and he calls, and he said, hey, hey, Brother Bob, and you know you've known me for a long time when you call me Brother Bob. When you call me Bobby, you taught me or changed my diaper. If you call me Robert, you're a bill collector. Amen? <laughs> Thank you, Miss Matney. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I just, <laughs> never mind. And uh, do not go there. Sit there. <laughs> and and, and, I, and I'll tell you that Jarrett was walking down some things, and I'm, and I'm sitting there on the phone, and I hung up, and I had this look on my face, and Miss Kelly said to me, what is going on? And I said, babe, can I tell you something? I know that these four boys are just as, and I was talking about the, the, the camaraderie and the friendship, and I, I said, I know these boys are all human, and they have their share of whatevers, but at this stage in their how does somebody get that kind of favor and then brother Roche your journey being one of our finest in our state how do you I don't know where I was at when you got your stripes but the other day I was like you are what and I used to you, you excuse me you do what I'm still flashing my light at these highway patrolmen thinking is Jacob gonna let me pass and uh, <laughs> and, and, I'll, and I'll tell you and I'm not saying they are this because they're that good I'm saying they're this because at some point they started having a different diet. I could go on and on and on and on. But that kind of stuff doesn't happen. And you don't get favor just for the sake of connects. You get favor to step out so that they can see your faith. Look, look what it says there in Daniel chapter 6. We know the lion's den, right? Let's drop all the way down to verse 21. Then Daniel said unto the king, the king was, was disturbed that he had. He, was, he, he, he cried in verse number 20 with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, ser, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions? Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God has sent an angel and has shut the lion's mouth that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him innocency was found in me, and also before thee, O, o king, have I done no hurt. Then when the king, exceeding glad for him, and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no matter of hurt was found upon him because he believed in his God. There is favor that puts you in a position to share your faith. Now, if you're sitting here and you say, Pastor, if you came to my job right now, if you came to my neighborhood, I, I, if you went and saw the people I do business with, they, they probably, I probably would not be in a position to share my faith because my disposition is not where it needs to be. Then let's change that. 
Let's change that. Let's not live that way anymore. And whatever's going on, let's change that. The very first thing I want to tell you is this, purpose in your heart. I know it's such a cliche, but settle it in your heart. From this point on, I'm going to start eating a different diet, and I'm going to cut out the world. Why? For the sake of just cutting it out to say, look at my badge of honor? No, I'm cutting this out so that it will change my diet. My diet changes my disposition. And we all know that with the body, if you binge Big Macs and all that kind of stuff out there, you're not going to be in a good place health-wise, and neither is it going to happen if you binge the world. The flesh, the old man, is going to take over, and it's going to bring out more of the devil than it is God and that is why go back to the word simplify your life with God but this purpose always come back to this purpose I am not my own I have been bought with a price I am not here to advance the kingdom of this world I am here to advance the kingdom of God stay on your purpose (laughs) I love this story there's a story involving Yogi Berra the well-known catcher for the New York Yankees and Hank Aaron who at the time was the chief power hitter for the Milwaukee Braves. The teams were playing in the World Series, and as usual, Yogi was keeping up his ceaseless chatter, intended to pep up his teammates on the one hand and then distract the Milwaukee batters on the other. As Aaron came to the plate, Yogi tried to distract him by saying, Henry, you're holding the bat wrong. You're supposed to hold it so you can read the trademark. Aaron didn't say anything, but when the next pitch came, he hit it into the left field bleachers. As rounding the bases and tagging up at home plate, he stopped and looked at Aaron and said, Aaron stopped and looked at Yogi Bear and said this, I didn't come to read, and then walked to the dugout. <laughs> Let me tell you something. The world's going to try to tell you why you're up there and what you're doing wrong. Keep your purpose. Your purpose is to honor and glorify the Lord. Your purpose is to be put in the middle of this world. He didn't take us out of this world. He didn't take us out for us just to, just for us to go to heaven. He left us here to gain favor so that a lost and dying world could see our God. Purpose. And then I'll just tell you the second thing is get the right kind of diet. Change your spiritual diet. There should be reference points for this world that you don't get. Can I say that again? There should be reference points for this world you don't get. The last rock song I listened to was in 1984. Still remember it. I'm not going to sing it, but July 1984. That was the last time that I on purpose listened to the wrong kind of music. That is the last time that I kept up with the top 40 That is the last time that I kept up with who the number one artist was every week from Casey Kasem. That was the last time, you old people, come on now. That was the last time that I would get in that car and I couldn't wait to go to the FM station. They start counting down. God did a work in my heart. And I'm not saying that I have been perfect like you at any time, but I find it very refreshing When somebody calls the name of this or the name of that, and I sit there and I go, I I, I don't know what you're talking about. And there have been times that we have retreated to our car, and I've looked at my wife and said, are we odd? Are we weird? It's one thing for the world to reference it, but when a fellow believer references something and everybody starts laughing, you're sitting there going, "I, I, I I don't know what you're talking about. And then we're looked down on. Let me tell you something. Keep the simplicity of your diet in the word of God. Be simple concerning that which is evil and wise concerning that which is good. Because it is that ignorance that is going to make you stand out in this environment. But God wants us to have his diet so that we can become fairer and fatter in our spirit and in our countenance so that it gives us favor, but not just for favor, so that we can share our faith. Elizabeth and Archie, I was thinking about your wedding the other day, and I was thinking about the reception. And if I could just in, take a couple of moments here. I was, I was surprised, shouldn't have been, not surprised, I was taken back by how many people in that town up there 
to where you were editor of that paper, Elizabeth, that came to your wedding. And I was talking to one of them that they, they subsequently came to visit because of your faith. And you had gained favor with these people. And for whatever reason, you were able to make an impact in their world. That's the reason why you have to have a good diet with God. It's so that God gives you favor, and then from that favor, you can share your faith. If I were to ask you, if I went to your world, and I started saying, hey, you, you, have they ever shared their faith? The response of the people around you will tell you if you even have favor with them to share your faith. I get a kick out of this, and I could keep going and going and going. I have an appointment with a young man this coming Saturday morning that has been subsequently coming. And the reason he came is because he works with one of our, from our singles department, Brother Mitchell, and it's one of the sole purpose young people that all of a sudden had favor. You know, this world is doing this, but gives you favor. Why? So that you could share your faith. This is the whole reason we must walk circumspectly. This is the whole reason we must play it straight with the Word of God. Alexis got baptized. Alexis got baptized. And sitting back to the left on that Sunday night was a couple. How long have y'all known this couple? Year? And uh, they work at McDonald's and uh, the Golden Arches. Put your hand over your heart. And, uh, and this couple is sitting back over there to the left. And this couple kind of adopted the twins at McDonald's. And they would come through and they would come through. And because there was something different about the twins, and even this last Sunday night when I was shaking their hand, and I walked up and said, I am so glad you were here. I saw you sitting back over there to the left while I was preaching. And, 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 and ma'am, Tammy, right? Her name's Tammy. She, she was nodding her head up and down, and she was enjoying this, and she was just having a good time. And I said, talk to me. She said, Pastor, we have been through 100 McDonald's. We have been through everywhere. But the day we pulled up, there was something different about the twins. We couldn't tell them apart. <laughs> there was something different about the twins. That made us kept coming back and coming back and coming back. And for whatever reason, what they were trying to say is they gained our favor. And then when Alexis looked at them and said, I'm getting baptized Sunday, would you come? Amen. Who honors a request like that when the voice over the drive through goes, are you using your mobile app today? I wish they would stop asking me that because let me tell you I'm using my mobile app because, anyways, so just get that off my chest. I just wanted to come to us tonight and let us know that if you took everybody that's here, we should be changing the world around us. I cannot stress that enough. We should be changing the world around us. And it's working. Because how do you explain singles that get people to come to church? I'll tell you how. It's because somebody's eating the right kind of diet that when you're in a culture that's Babylonian, you're standing out. How are you standing out like that? Because you're given favor. And then that's where you can share your faith. The favor you have will put you in positions to where you share your faith. I was on the elevator coming down, and, 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 I, and I have a name, and I'll talk about it at the end of the service. I need some of y'all's help. Getting done watching, I mean, visiting Brother Poncho's um, um, supervisor, and then I'm on the elevator, and this lady steps on, and, and one of the one of the my, my friends sent me a clip, and I'm watching this clip of this little boy singing, and I am just cracking. I mean, I'm I'm with him right there. I'm I'm enjoying the clip, and I couldn't find the off button, and we stepped on, and this lady recognize this and I said ma'am I'm, I'm sorry I said I was just up here and I, I went I broke into Bob and I was just enjoying life and and uh, and all of a sudden come to find out her, her her mama had a stroke and in the middle of the parking lot after we got off the other I talked to her on the way out and 
in the middle of the parking lot. I said, ma'am, can I pray for your mom? She just started weeping. She said, Pastor, I just got back into church four years ago. And she started telling me a couple of things. And in the parking lot, I was able to stand there and pray with her. And then I said, ma'am, would it be okay if some of our ladies went to visit your mama? And she said, would you? And I took out my Palm Pilot. See, see, you old people get that. This, this, there's a generation don't get that at all. I had to explain it. And I wrote down Miss Willie Martin's name in her room number. Favor from Brother Poncho puts him in a position to share his faith. And then that faith was shared, which spilled over to my world. And now my world got to share my faith and then help this lady. And now we get a chance to love on this lady and share this. You know, the gospel was never meant to be anything other than organic with the believers on the inside that understood we're strangers and we're pilgrims on this earth. And we have to stand out. And I'm asking you, please change your diet spiritually so that God will give you favor so that you can share your faith and that people will see your God. Go to Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6 tells us what happens to us. If we start sowing the wrong things. Galatians chapter 6 and verse number 7. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of, his, of the flesh reap what? Corruption. Verse number 8. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap what? Life everlasting. If we binge the world's diet, of sensualism, negativity, criticizing, gossip, self-love, hate, suspicion, and we just keep binging what the world has, then do not expect your countenance to be where it needs to be for somebody to see the difference. And you can't cover it up. You cannot cover it up. I, I have one desire for tonight, and that is this. That you would step out and whoever God has given you favor with, step out this week and ask them about their soul. Ask them. There's a reason why you get pulled into the office. There's a reason why you're the fair-haired child. There's a reason why you have that connect. You know why you have that connect? It's not for you to get anything. It's for you to share your faith. Thank you for taking the time to view our services. I trust that the sermon, the message, the truth was a blessing to you. My number's at the bottom of the screen. If I can do anything for you or Emmanuel Baptist could be a blessing to you or yours, please reach out to me, let me know. I also would like to know what God has done in your heart. I would love to rejoice with you. I would love to pray with you. I would love to add your prayer request to our Wednesday night prayer bulletin. So if you want to, number's at the bottom of the screen. Text me, let me know. God bless you, and I trust that the Lord will bless your day. Join us again for another broadcast here at Emmanuel Baptist Church.